Monk Eastman set the standards for the way the early New York gangster dressed, talked, and behaved. Pretty much every gangster from 1900 up to around 1940, if you read the old papers, every gangster that comes around is usually compared to Monk Eastman. Uh, imitators were known to uh, pick up on various slang that he used, to copy his vocal style, his swagger, his manner of dress. Start a tap dance? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. How's your Halloween going? It's good, I guess. Hey, Adam, let me ask you something. Sure, what's up, Ed? You fight a lot, right? I mean, you train in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and MMA, right? Yeah, I box in a wrestle a few times a week. Why, what's up? You wanna come train? Me? Yeah. You should, right? For sure. Um, I actually got this problem, you know, and I need some help dealing with it. Uh-oh. What kind of problem is that? Lindsay, my girlfriend. Yeah, I know her. She has this personal trainer. And uh, he's always trying to push how far he can draw the line with her. You know, he'll <clears throat> put his hand on her thigh when they're doing squats. Or uh, he'll give her, you know, just a little too much support when they're doing chest presses. Stuff like that, you know? That's disrespectful as hell, man. Yeah. <clears throat> he'll also flirt with her. You know, he'll say things like, your man doesn't know what he's got. Or, you know, your man ain't a real man. I mean, he even had the balls to ask her if she loves me. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You know all this for a fact. She tells me. You know, when I see it myself, we work out at the same gym. Sometimes I can hear the two of them laughing. Sometimes when they finish working out, this guy will come walking by. You know, just stop. And just stare me down me right in the eyes, just shake his head in disgust, and then just walk away, right in front of my girl. You ever stepped at a guy? Once, but you know how girls are. You say one thing, you know, they rip your head off. Yeah, and that's the truth. Million trainers in the city, yet she chooses to stay with this peckerhead. It's not cool, man. No. No, it's not cool. Come here, Adam. What's on your mind, Dave? You wouldn't happen to know anyone who could, you know, send a message to this guy. I mean, Dave, if it was me, I'd take care of it myself. But I might know some guys that'd be interested in doing something like that. Yeah? But it's gonna cost you. That's not an issue. Dave, I'm not just talking about cash. Whatever. You know, I don't care. I just want it done. You sure? Yes. All right. Dofu. Go downstairs and wake those guys up. Do it. Get your gun, get your gun, take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you and me, every son of liberty. Hurry right away. You know, Monk was no doubt a wild man, you know, pretty quick to bust someone's head open. And so the guys who hung with him were, you know, equally as tough. I'm sure they had to be. And um, I mentioned Lolly Myers. He was, he was a nut job. He, you know, 
killed a guy and robbed another guy and this within an hour of each other. <laughs> They're a bunch of crazy guys hanging out together and you know, trouble's gonna happen, someone's gonna start it at some point. What? What are you doing? You know what you're doing, you four flusher. You're cheating me all night. Four flusher? Yeah, that's right. You accusing me of cheating? Oh, well, when did you figure it out? Don't get small with me. I'll smack you in the beat. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, unless you want to line the coroner's pockets tonight, you better deal them straight. Whoa. Let's just play the game, Joe. Looks like we have a job. It's a strong arm job for a Wall Street guy. The yak? Yeah, it's easy money. It's real soft though. Uh-huh. So wake Monk up. What do you mean wake Monk up? You wake him up. Wake Monk up, come on! You wake him oh, up! Would you just wake him up already? You wake him up! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! Calm down! It's all right. It says who? The barkeep upstairs. Yeah. So send him down here. We have a job. Job? That's right. This could be what finally gets us out of here. For a price, for a price, hey, your buddy, get a taste of the old 14th Street Justice. <laughs> Use yet, you know what to do, eh? You had a Wall Street broker having some trouble with his former coachman who was, you know, vandalizing his house, didn't like the fact that he was getting fired, etc. And so this guy hired Monk, who was already, you know, some notoriety of his own. So he hired Monk to get rid of this coachman to guard his house. So they hung out there for about a week, nothing happened, and they got bored, so they went and found the coachman and beat the hell out of him. And that caused a big stir, it was a big uh, trial at the time, because the coachman sued. And so you had, you know, two semi-famous people involved in this lawsuit, one a Wall Street broker and one a gangster. Nice workout, baby. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow? <laughs> Definitely. Okay, baby. Hello, Ray. You know who we are? Tell me. It's like I really I'm Mark care. Eastman. Oh, okay. I cut half the politician this time. We cut some mice. Listen, bull. The last duck who cut me is in sleep in Potter's Field. You know who I am? What? Who do you know at Tammany Hall? Let me ask you that. Tammany Hall? Monk was very much of the streets. He would, spent most of his life on the streets. The streets were his, first his playground, and then his workplace. He was always in trouble, just kept, you know, as much as he said, you know, this is it, last time, monkey's been straightened out. He always came back and did crimes, and uh, I think America in general loves, you know, an underdog who can, you know, elevate himself and come through. There's an old saying in history, the clothes change, but the people don't. <laughs> and that would definitely have been Eastman. 